welcome back guys today we are going to start the discussion of the first amino acid discussion we are going to have that is glycine and serine okay glycine and serine discussion we are going to start here before that we have discussed about the general amino acid metabolism and the urea cycle so go check that one out first before getting into glycine and serine discussion so let's get started okay first we will move on with glycine okay glycine now first we will have an overview okay now in center we will have our glycine here okay this glycine is formed from different components what are the component we will see first is our serine from serine glycine can be formed also from glyoxalate glyoxalate okay also from glycine synthase enzyme glycine synthase and also from threonine threonine okay so these are the compounds from which glycine can be formed the important compounds there are many compounds from which glycine can be formed but the importance were th threonine glycine synthase enzyme glyoxalate and also from serine okay yes so these are compounds from which glycine is formed glycine is in the center now there are always two fates of every compounds okay one is the catabolic fate what happens when the compound gets broken down other one is our anabolic fate what happens when the compound gets integrated it helps in formation of other important compounds so with catabolic fat okay we have formation of serine okay serine is formed from which pyruvate and we know from pyruvate glucose can form so this is glucogenic amino acid glucogenic amino acid from serine pyruvate can be formed also it undergoes to the glycine cleavage system glycine cleavage system okay serine to pyruvate and glycine cleavage system are the two catabolic fats now in the anabolic fat we have c4 c5 n7 of purine ring purine ring fourth carbon fifth carbon and seventh nitrogen of the purine ring comes from glycine okay next is creatinine creatinine formation of creatinine also requires glycine we will see in the next aromatic acid discussion now also heme heme comes from glycine so this is called question asked heme comes from which amino acid so this is glycine okay and finally we have our glutathione 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 antioxidant comes from glycine so this is the total overview of glycine formation metabolism catabolism anabolic effect everything this is the overview okay so let's start the discussion we will start with the chemistry okay chemistry it's the simplest amino acid we all know that simplest amino acid is glycine simplest amino acid the simplest structure if seen the structure of amino acid what is it the carboxyl group the amino group the hydrogen above and below dh this is our alpha carbon atom alpha carbon atom here no asymmetric carbon no asymmetric carbon so no optically active carbon atom there are no asymmetric carbon so there are no optically active carbon atom here okay yes some other features are this is a non essential amino acid non essential amino acid yes all the features we will lay down 
purely glucogenic purely glucogenic yes you see through pyruvate serine and pyruvate it was the glucogenic pathway purely glucogenic moving on it's a polar amino acid polar amino acid it can generate charges it's a simple amino acid simple amino acid polar simple purely glucogenic and non essential along with no asymmetric carbon and the fact that it's a it's the simplest amino acid simplest amino acid yes polar simple purely glucogenic and non essential okay structure here of glycine so let's start with the metabolism first is we we'll see the synthesis synthesis of glycine okay first is we have seen from serine serine now on serine the enzyme acting is serine hydroxyl methyl transferase serine hydroxyl methyl transferase okay yes now this requires plp and folic acid these are b6 b9 okay now here in the subsequent part methylene thfa is formed okay which is the primary donor of one carbon metabolism we have discussed everything in our vitamin section so check the folic acid vitamin b9 discussion on this channel we will gain a lot of things how methylene thfa is the primary donor of one carbon metabolism okay and here glycine is formed glycine is formed serine hydroxyl methyl transferase requires plp b6 and folic acid b9 here the important part is that the beta carbon of serine is removed beta carbon of serine is removed yes this was the first compound from which glycine is formed in the second compound we have seen this glyoxalate glyoxalate yes glyoxalate is the keto acid form of glycine keto acid form of glycine okay now how the conversion takes place here is the glyoxalate okay it's converted to glycine and on the opposite side alanine is getting converted to yes pyruvate and uh, no this is a reversible reaction enzyme here is glyoxalate alanine amino transferase glyoxalate glyoxalate alanine alanine amino transferase very simple transamination reaction we have discussed before also if you haven't seen that video go check that out yes and this requires plp remember plp b6 is everywhere in bond in every amino acid metabolism is everywhere involved in the amino acid metabolism we will find plp plp is a must in every amino acid metabolism every conversion every enzyme has this cofactor as plp so don't forget that glyoxalate to glycine because alanine to conversion to pyruvate the enzyme is glyoxalate alanine amino transferase it's transamination reaction here yes now this in glyoxalate next compound is we have our gly these are threonine Sir, three onion. Yes. Now the enzyme here is three onion aldolase. Three onion 
aldolase aldolase this threonine aldolase produces glycine along with acetaldehyde acetaldehyde so threonine glycine and acetaldehyde from threonine aldolase glyoxylate so transamination reaction and serine through serine hydroxyl methyl transferase these are the three important sources from which glycine is synthesized now we will move on to the catabolism part catabolism okay in a very interesting discussion in this catabolism so we have a first star glycine cleavage system glycine cleavage system glycine cleavage system okay now this system is a remember multi enzyme complex multi enzyme complex so what we will first see the complex here so in the center we have our h protein we have one h protein now the first enzyme here is first enzyme attached here is glycine decarboxylase decarboxylase glycine decarboxylase okay second enzyme attached here is amino methyl transferase amino methyl transferase the third enzyme attached here is dihydrolipomide dehydrogenase dihydro lipomide dehydrogenase so these are the three enzymes glycine decarboxylase amino methyl transferase amt dihydrolipomide dehydrogenase attached to the h protein this is the multi enzyme complex of glycine cleavage system okay now we we'll see the functions of the enzyme and where the enzyme acts on the glycine molecule okay functions of enzymes okay so we'll draw the simplest amino acid glycine molecule okay yes we have drawn the simplest glycine structure okay now on this bond okay this is the bond first glycine decarboxylase act glycine decarboxylase acts removes carbon dioxide okay first is done now second enzyme amino methyl transferase amino methyl transferase acts on this bond okay these two bonds are removed methyl transferase amino amino part is removed here co2 is removed okay now this glycine is then used as to convert thfa tetrahydrofolic acid to methylene thfa methylene thfa okay this is the by product where thfa is converted to methylene thfa upon action of this glycine cleavage system which is a multi enzyme complex yes THF is converted to methylene THF in the end. Yes, and decarboxylase removes CO2, the CO2 group. Amino acid transferase acts on this bond to remove the amino group. Okay. Yes. Now, this was one of the important catabolic phase of glycine. It is a glycine cleavage system. Now we'll see the anabolic phase of glycine. Okay. anabolic phase of glycine yes <coughs> so first 
we know that it is creatinine. It is creatinine. First, we have seen creatinine. Yes. Now, for creatinine, three amino acids are required for formation of creatinine. Three amino acids are required for formation for creatinine. First is our glycine, we know. Glycine combines with arginine. Glycine combines with arginine. Okay. To form guanidino acetate. Guanidino acetate. In the presence of enzyme, glycine arginine amidino transferase. Glycine arginine amidino transferase amidino guanidino and obviously it takes place in our kidneys it's first step of combination of arginine and glycine to form guanidine acetate it takes place in kidney now this guanidine acetate is further converted to creatine creatine Okay, not creatinine, creatine through this enzyme guanidino acetate methyl transferase guanidino acetate methyl transferase guanidino acetate methyl transferase take this takes place in liver now here methionine Methionine amino acid is involved here. Okay, this methionine is the donor of S adenosyl methionine. Just remember SAM, which is further converted to S adenosyl histamine. SAM to SATCH. Methionine is the donor. Just remember this conversion. Okay, we will discuss in the <sighs> sulfur containing amino acid. S adenosyl methionine is converted to S adenosyl homocysteine. Okay, it takes place in the liver and methionine is the donor. Guanidine acetate methyl transferase. And this creatine is acted upon by acted upon by creatine kinase. Kinase enzyme acts here. Get okay, this again. Creatine kinase form creatine phosphate. Creatine phosphate is formed. Okay, this creatine phosphate has some features. We'll see here. High energy compound. First is the high energy compound. Okay. Second is it's the immediate replenishing of ATP. Immediate replenisher of ATP in muscles during exercise okay it's high energy compound which is the immediate replenisher of ATP in muscles during exercise which is yes creatine phosphate now on this creatine phosphate is con converted to creatinine creatine canalar creatinine is formed here ATP is converted to ATP and ATP is produced takes place in the muscles okay this this step okay, this step particularly here is important because this is a spontaneous step no enzyme is involved here it's a spontaneous step called Coman's reaction Coman's reaction okay spontaneous step remember spontaneous step this creatine phosphate to creatinine is a spontaneous step in the muscle ATP is produced no enzymes are involved okay so this was our total formation of creatine three amino acids involved here okay yes glycine arginine and what else what else can you see yes methionine so we'll write this again 
glycine arginine and methionine this is required for creatinine production yes and the last step is our spontaneous step asked frequently yes creatine phosphate properties are also asked so high energy compound now moving on to the second compound here we have is our heme yes now heme heme synthesis which is involved it is involved along with succinyl coenzyme a succinyl coenzyme a combines with our glycine yes to form and several steps in the heme synthesis in the heme synthesis now what is the glycine's role it combines with the succinyl coenzyme a yes succinyl coenzyme and glycine involved in heme synthesis also is in glutathione it's a sulfur containing amino acid we'll see its metabolism when we discuss the sulfur containing amino acids okay remember glutathione sulfur containing amino acid glycine is involved next is we have c4 c5 and n7 of urine ring very important c4 c5 and 7 of urine ring is glycine also as a neurotransmitter as a neurotransmitter in cns remember this is both excitatory and inhibitory and inhibitory both excitatory and inhibitory as a neurotransmitter in the cns glycine and it's also a conjugating agent conjugating agent glycine conjugates bile acids and benzoyl coa benzoyl coenzyme a bile acid and benzoyl coa are conjugated such so steps taking place in the detoxification of the body glycine is involved here okay yes and moving on we know glycine is the most recurring amino acid of collagen every third amino acid in collagen is glycine okay in collagen it's the most recurring amino acid and it also induces bends induces bends in secondary structure of proteins structure of proteins okay yes so this is our anabolic phase of glycine first is creatine in next is our heme in glutathione also in purine ring as a neurotransmitter conjugation collagen structure and secondary structure of proteins inducing bends okay now we'll move on to the clinical discussion clinical correlation of glycine okay yes clinical correlation of glycine it causes a condition called hyperoxalemia hyperoxalemia okay now this is again of two types so primary and secondary hyperoxalemia primary and secondary so primary is again of two types type 1 and type 2 okay so let's start with primary primary type 1 okay. yes now the defect enzyme defect is 
Glycolate alanine amino transfers. Glyoxalate alanine amino transfers. We have seen that in the synthesis phase of glycine. So glycolate alanine amino transfers from glycolate to glycine is defective. So this enzyme here is defective here. Okay. Defect. So this glyoxalate accumulates as oxalate stones. Oxalate stones. Due to diff defect of glyoxalate alanine amino transferase. This is primary type 1 hyperoxalemia. Now type 2 we see what's the type 2 the enzyme defect enzyme defect the enzyme one of the enzymes of the glycine cleavage system it is our glyceraldehyde dehydrogenase glyceraldehyde dehydrogenase or glyoxalate reductase glyoxalate reductase what does this do there is a compound glycocolic acid glycocolic acid which is found from glyoxalate this enzyme is involved here now this enzyme is defective here glycocolic acid is not found and glycolate accumulation in form of oxalate stones so basically in the primary form oxalate stones are found due to efficiency of different types of enzymes type 2 glycerol dehydrogenase glyoxalate reductase primary glyoxalate alanine amino transfers oxalate stones are accumulated in both the forms this was the primary in which we saw type 1 and type 2 now moving on to secondary type secondary remember secondary is first is due to vitamin B6 deficiency which is our PLP which is common coenzymes of all the important enzymes out there yes PLP is required by glyoxalate alanine amino transferase glyoxalate alanine amino transferase so oxalate stones are formed. Oxalate stones are deposited. Vitamin B6 deficiency. Another one is vitamin C toxicity. Vitamin C toxicity can also lead to yes oxalate stones. Also, ethylene glycol poisoning. Ethylene glycol poisoning. Yes, ethylene glycol poisoning. And also there could be defect in glycine cleavage system. Defect in glycine cleavage system. These are the some of the reasons for secondary development of hyperoxalemia. Then B6 deficiency, C toxicity, could be ethylene glycol poisoning or defect in the glycine cleavage system. So this was the only clinical correlation of glycine hyperoxalemia so with this we complete our discussion on glycine simplest amino acid discussion its formation catabolism anabolism clinical link now we'll continue our discussion on to serine serine okay this is one of the simple amino acid okay this is the hydroxyl group containing amino acid hydroxyl group containing amino acid ok now see the structure here chemistry this amino group alpha carbon carboxyl group above hydrogen and below we have CH2 OH group this is the hydroxyl group we are talking about 
CS2 OS group. <coughs> Features of this amino acid polar amino acid but uncharged. Polar amino acid but uncharged. Non essential. Just like glycine. Purely glucogenic. Just like glycine and OH group OH group present here is the most common set of phosphorylation is the most common site of phosphorylation this is the importance of the OH group in serine or common set of phosphorylation polar amino acid but uncharged important here yes non essential and purely glucogenic as glycine and OH group phosphorylation most common site CH2 OH group here serine hydroxyl group containing amino acid now we will see some formations ok serine from ok first is glycine glycine and serine we have seen before reversible for found from each other ok also serine is formed from 3 phosphoglycerate 3 phosphoglycerate 3 phosphoglycerate so these are the two sources from which serine is found very short nothing much explanation is needed here now we will see the metabolic functions metabolic functions serine discussion is a very short discussion ok now the metabolic functions first seen that it is the primary donor of first one carbon metabolism primary donor of one carbon metabolism ok you seen serine glycine serine hydroxymethyl transferase serine hydroxymethyl transferase we have seen before methyl THFA thelin THFA is formed requires TLP B6 and B9 folic acid we have seen this before so it is a primary donor of carbon metabolism who is involved serine is involved ok Moving on, secondary, the second primary function can synthesize cysteine. Can synthesize cysteine. Repeat this again. Cysteine. Say sulfur containing amino acid. We will discuss it discussing cysteine homocysteine methane everything we will discuss can synthesize cysteine serine is involved ok yes now we know this compound phosphatidyl serine phosphatidyl serine in the cellular membranes is yes, one of the most phospholipids phosphatidyl serine in short PS is derived from serine ok is derived from serine Fourth, we have sphingosin. Sphingosin. Now this is combination of serine along with palmitoyl coa. Palmitoyl coa. Fifth, we have selenocysteine. Selenocysteine. These are 21st amino acid discovery selenocysteine also serine is involved cysteine is involved and selenocysteine is also involved yes now from serine okay decarboxylation CO2 is removed and this step requires PLP okay ethanolamine is formed ethanolamine is formed okay Ethanolamine is converted to choline. Choline. Just trimethyl ethanolamine. 
ट्राइमिथाइल इथेनोलामाइन कोलिन इज फ्रॉम इथेनोलामाइन एंड फ्रॉम कोलिन वी हैव आवर B10 ओके B10 B10 इज आवर ट्राइमिथाइल ग्लाइसिन ट्राइमिथाइल ग्लाइसिन ओके दिस इज वन ऑफ द हाउ इथेनोलामाइन कोलिन एंड B10 आर involved in serine metabolism this is an important reaction here you need to remember this asked a lot of times in entrances okay yes we go on to the seventh involved in the glycoproteins glycoproteins link formation okay glycoproteins link formation how it is done this is a serine there is a o link here there is a carbohydrate here carbohydrate it's called o linked glycoprotein o linked glycoprotein okay yes glycoprotein link formation the eighth the oh group is the most common site for phosphorylation for phosphorylation you have seen this before yes oh group is the most common site for phosphorylation so this was all about the metabolic functions of serine very short to be very non essential amino acid nothing much to discuss here okay so the important is that it's the first is the primary donor of one carbon this is the important thing cysteine selenocysteine phosphatidyl serine obviously this metabolic reaction is important yes remember oh group is the most common site for phosphorylation this was all about our discussion on glycine and serine the synthesis catabolism anabolism chemical link relation hyperoxalemia serine is involved in which metabolisms are all discussed here revise them guys it's pretty important discussion thanks for watching i'll catch you in the next one good luck